The Ritual Misery podcast is no longer in beta, but iOS 12 is. Why is there so much TP in Las Cruces? We're going to find out about some fun games, especially one from a prominent Diamond Club member. And a video by the Have a Drink people. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 185 for Thursday, the 23rd of August, 2018. This is, this is the show where two lifelong friends celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. How you doing, buddy? Doing well. It is Thursday, my favorite night of the week because it's RMP night. Looking forward to talking to you, man. I'm just glad things? you didn't say good, doing good. Done good. I doing good. I do good. <laughs> <laughs> And the hate mail comes in. Ritual Misery Podcast at gmail.com. Um, hey, dude. I like uh, to throw in the bad grammar just for Richard Gunther's sake because it's like <laughs> nails on the sock that guy. Um, his home on uh, 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 podcast is top 10 on iTunes tech um, podcast. Excellent. This week. Yeah. It is a frequent traveler to the top 10 top yeah, uh, well, it's he's, podcasts. And he's it's good to. He's an awesome dude doing an awesome show. That's all I'm going to say about that. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, Richard. You, you know, certain things like, you know, your top 10 or your your uh, your podcast hitting top 10 on, on iTunes, it makes you feel good, man. It makes you feel awesome. I'm going to share a story today about when you don't feel so awesome. Mm, okay. That yeah. should be uplifting. Oh, oh well, it, it, it might be. Uh, you should at least raise your spirits. Uh, we'll, we'll count our lucky stars that we're not you. you, you yeah, you will. Um, <laughs> you, you know our, our friend, our friend Jack Flitton. He's got a favorite game that he likes to play. Okay. Do you remember what game what game that is? Uh so Jack Flitton, a stand-up comedian and um, a former podcast host in his own right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do not recall his favorite game. Oh, Sonic the Hedgehog. No, his favorite nope. game is Don't Poop at Work. Ah, uh, that game. Yes. So I was Either way playing... you win. Huh? Yeah, Either yeah. way you win. Well, I found a, a situation in which you lose. Oh, dear God. Um, so I am playing Don't Poop at Work, and I, I promise this is not a poop joke kind of, kind of story. Um, <laughs> however, I almost said but, and I was like, that's too ironic. I'm I'm playing Don't Poop at Work and I'm doing pretty good. I mean I'm 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 like halfway <laughs> through the level, you know? And lunchtime comes around and I, I go to the commissary to pick up lunch for myself and, and my wife. And I suddenly run out of lives. Like it's time to go. It's <laughs> oh, I no. I gotta go. Okay. I'm running into the commissary, and of course I can't run because I'm a senior NCO walking around in uniform. Can't just be belligerent, right? Um <laughs> You could, but and, and of course, it was one of those days when I had to park way at the other end of the parking lot. So it's like a like a four mile trek, it seems, to get to the commissary. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you didn't get like parking or anything. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, I got. I got. Uh, you don't matter because you're not a chief's wife parking. Ah, yes, the chief wife <laughs> parking. Um, I feel if chiefs wives can use the chief spot, the E9 spot in the commissary, then the husbands of pregnant women should be able to use the stork parking. Mm-hmm. That's how I right. feel about that. Like it, it's got to be going both ways. The, the parking spot reserved for spouses of deployed members, mm-hmm. uh, used, used to really piss off somebody that I knew who was a single mom in the military. Mm. And, um, she's like, yeah. Fuck the wives of, of deployed members. Wow. <laughs> she had she had the worst of all worlds. I they just uh, with with the ops tempo these days, that doesn't seem like it'd be an effective spot anyway. Like it'd just always be full. Yeah, I think that's the commissary. The commissary is parking for deployed. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um anyway, so I get into the commissary. <laughs> and anytime I use the restroom at the commissary, it's never full. Like it, it's just it's there's never so this is a so this is a regular thing that you do. Well, like, I, I played, think I've been I, the commissary restroom once. Right, but how often do you go to the commissary? I at least weekly. Okay, see, I go there like four times a week for lunch. <laughs> okay, so I'm there consistently at a prime pooping time or peeing time in the middle of my day. 
I'm an after school pooper myself. Well, yeah, like that'd I, be that'd be great. But what if the bathroom's just completely closed because the cleaning lady decides to come right at lunchtime every day? So sometimes I just want to go to the bathroom and pee and can't because the cleaning lady's in there and that's just not something you do. So then I have to go to my next destination, which is the commissary. So I'm I'm visiting the the restroom there fairly frequently. Okay. However, I don't. I, I it's it's very rare that I go in there to 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 poop. Um, and now I know why. Because I go in there and there's a dude washing himself at the sink. Like his hands, washing his hands. No. Using his uh, hands to wash other parts of his body at the sink. Like his like his face? No, like his body, like his armpits. Like he's taking a shepherd shower in the sink <laughs> at, the at the commissary. Yeah. Which I'm not here to judge him because I don't know his situation. I didn't stop to say hi. Like that's that's his thing. It's just it's okay. an inconvenience to me at this time. Next to him. Okay. So the is, gym showers were full. He, right. So he's at the commissary. Right. Um so next to him is the urinal and the urinal is taken. Okay. It d- didn't matter to me anyway, because I wasn't there to take a pee. <laughs> the next stall is available. Uh, no, no. The next stall is a, is a shitter and it's full. Uh, the Shitters. one after that is available. And then the last one down at the very end is the handicapped one. And it was available. So I jumped in that one because the door is already open. Okay. I mean, that's the, uh, that's like the corner office. Right. Well, apparently it's most frequently used office because as I sit down and uh, am not in the best of ways, I look over and there's no toilet paper. Oh, and you've already begun the ritual. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm already like, it, I barely made it to the throne, let alone uh, for the ritual to begin. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Now, here's here's the really bad part, okay? I know... I know that if I asked for help, like, hey, someone out there can give me some uh, toilet paper, it'd be great. The stall next to me, of course, is empty, like, as I said. So no one's going to, like, the dude next to me can't just, like, throw something underneath the bottom or whatever. Uh, there's no no handouts there. Um, I'm, I don't want the dude washing himself half naked from the sink, bringing me over whatever paper he's using <laughs> to scrub and or dry his body parts. And I don't have my phone on me because I was just going to go grab lunch and leave. So I made sure I had poop. my wallet, left my Who phone in the poop? truck. Who goes poop without their phone? Oh, I wasn't planning on it until I got out of the truck and started walking in the store. Um, so, yeah, I was in a bad way. This is where I mentioned about four years ago, I tweeted, I was in the Phoenix International Airport, and I tweeted that the greatest single thing that you can find in an airport are toilet condoms. Oh, okay. The ass gaskets. Yes. The big piece of paper that you can throw over the seat and that way you don't have to sit on whatever anybody else has been doing to the seat. I typically don't use them because why? They're just a waste of paper. Sometimes the seat's really nasty or you just, you maybe you don't have time to clean it off pro, you know, to your liking so you just throw it down there. At least you got some kind of filter between you and whatever disgustingness is sitting there. Yeah. Uh, on this day, I was using them for TP. <gasps> oh, and in case you didn't know, those things are like tissue paper. Like they're not like toilet paper where they have some some fiber. Yeah, to them. no, the those things like dissolve upon skin contact. Let alone this is like this is like tracing paper. It's bad. <laughs> it's awful. And I used like twenty of them. <laughs> you used the whole pack of ass condoms because again, this wasn't like a a bread loaf. This was more <laughs> like a. This is this is like a, a Yahoo or Yoohoo. This is more like Yoohoo than bread. Um, oh, yeah. No. So it's like a root beer dispenser. Y- yeah, and okay. So now now I'm gonna make this a little bit worse. On my way into the bathroom, my top button on my on my B- ABUs popped off because I was in such a hurry to get them off. So I just ripped them <laughs> open and poop that went off one way. Um the 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 ass gaskets as you as you put it on there. Uh, They didn't hold up very well, so I wasn't able to use one of my hands when I was putting my pants back on, like like buttoning up my pants and and tucking my shirt in and everything else. And I certainly couldn't put my blouse on with just one hand, trying to keep the other hand from touching anything until Uh, I could wash it. Um, Yeah, yeah, so that's the situation I was left in. Um, And then, of course, I had this, I was half disheveled in uniform at the commissary on base with other military members around and I had to go 
uh, wash my my hand so I could finish putting my uniform on next to this dude that's half naked taking a shepherd shower, and here I am with half my clothes half hanging off. And you're the guy that made the bathroom stink. Yes. And everyone knows it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so who comes walking in? Oh. Oh, tell me. Tell me it was like the chief or the base commander. Uh, n- no, it was it was um it was it was the base chief. Ah, uh, okay. Um, newly arrived, only been here a couple months. Oh, so you're making a good first impression. Yeah, great first impression. Standing there with half my clothes half hanging off my body as I'm t- t- frantically trying to scrub the whatever whatever off my hand. Your, ma- your master sergeant. A chevron laden blouse half hanging no 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 that was still hanging over the door of the of the stall and this of course it was like i said it was open when i got there it swung wide open when i left like got out of the stall to go to the sink it's just hanging (laughs) over the top and of course my master instructor is hanging there at the very top like like a like a a fucking a flag of uh a a, a pinnacle of, of of stripedness right there oh man that is that's that's horrific. Yeah, so that was my Tuesday. Oh man. Man, Tuesdays. Or was that Monday? That might have been Monday. I was having a really shitty Monday too. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. So uh tell me tell me something better happened to you in Las Cruces than what happened to me at the commissary. Oh man. All right. So I live in Alamogordo, New Mexico, in the middle of fucking nowhere. I mean, literally, the, like the next town is an hour away from me, mm-hmm. and that's that town is called Las Cruces. <laughs> and uh, we 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 joke about Las Cruces being the big city uh, because they have things like um, you know stores, restaurants, people, Uber, <laughs> people, <laughs> yeah, roads that are not dirt. More than one hotel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So Steph's birthday was last week. And our great friend Travis, his birthday was this week. Hmm. So we decided to do a Las Cruces trip, go to a couple of breweries and just have a have a grand old time and and uh, grab a hotel for the night. And um, that was that's what we did this weekend. And it was amazing just to get out of this town <laughs> like that alone was it automatically made the, the weekend wonderful and then to spend time in breweries trying new beers that we've never had before stuffing ourselves silly with bar food um yeah man it was uh it was a really really good time and i have no complaints except well okay except for one the first brewery that we were at we were on the inside and they had a, a large outdoor seating area mm-hmm. and we wanted to move out to the outdoor seating area because it was much cooler out there. Once the sun went down, uh, the problem is that when we went to go outside, the, the patio was still for the most part full, except mm-hmm. for two tables, one of which was completely empty and it was kind of in the corner. And then the table next to it had one person at it. Well, the one person that was there uh, I had met him probably about a half hour previous to this and determined that he is probably on meth, <laughs> uh, because he wanted to talk to me and I was like, Hey, dude, I, you- I have found that people on meth are more likely to want to talk to you than that is correct. Yeah. You got to be on drugs to, to spend more than like five seconds talking to me. Uh, but this guy in particular, I like, I made just, just you know, the, the most benign conversation, like, how's it going, man? That kind of stuff. And he, Oh, I, so while I'm talking to him half assed, I pull out my phone to, to check it. And he's like, he's like, what, what what you could doing on your phone? Like, uh, just, uh, checking Facebook notifications. He's like, Oh man, I hear you, man. Fuck phones. Right. I was like, uh, sure. Maybe he's not like, your yeah. target our target audience. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, <laughs> then he's like, he's oh god, what was it? He said something something about um yeah, somebody somebody told me that that um I need to uh fix my life, but I'm righteous in the eyes of the Lord, man. Or so, something to that effect. And I was like, 
all right, bro. Like, yeah. you take it easy now. <laughs> and then, so like fast forward, like half hour, 45 minutes or whatever, when we went to look for a table outside, mm-hmm. our choice is. was his table or the only other empty table, which was right next to it. And we're like, yeah, it's time to, it's time to go to another place. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It would have been awesome that, if you went to the, the next place and he showed up there too. Oh my God. Spreading the same message. I'm righteous yeah. in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah, it was it it was it was an interesting encounter. That'd been great. Um but so speaking of Steph's birthday, one of the gifts that she received was one of the many, many versions of the card game Flux. Mm-hmm. In fact in fact, the one that we played was the Doctor Who version of Flux. Have you ever played Flux? I have not. I've heard of it, never played it. Man, this game is pretty fun. Uh, of course, you know, there's very, many different variants of it, but it's all basically the same thing where it's a card game whose rules constantly change. Mm. And it can be confusing at first, as in like the first five minutes when you're like, what the, f- I don't, why is the rule, <laughs> j- what? <laughs> but once you have it, once you pass that initial five minutes after like a couple rounds of turns, mm. like, you realize that you don't have to memorize any of the rules because they're going to be right in front of you. (laughs) (laughs) It is. It's it's the details really. It's, uh, you know, technicalities. Yeah. Like I, I highly recommend it. Like Mm. the flux games are super fun. Uh, but speaking of games, I received something in the mail today. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a long awaited today. You got it today. Today, yes, oh. I came home from work and I had a package waiting for me. Oh, look, it's still in the Action wrapper. Action News. Have you ever heard of this game called Action News? No, but it's still in the wrapper, so it must be nice. <laughs> it's super nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't dug into it yet, um, but I've, I've heard, I've heard of this game mm-hmm. before, and um, uh, just randomly showed up on my door, I think, because oh yeah, it's been a really, really long time since. <laughs> So this is the this is the game that uh, Justin Robert Young started with John Teasdale, and they announced announced the launch of it at Nerdtacular um, about a year, about fourteen months ago. At at the most recent Nerdtacular, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm excited to play this game. Uh, I played the Contender, which is uh, Justin and uh, John's uh, previous game. And it's a blast, mm-hmm. and Action News is supposed to be way more fun than that game even, and I can't wait to play this one. Um, and everybody should go check this thing out. It's actionnewsgame.com. There you go. Uh, go check it out. And, um, man, I've got um, I've got a follow-up to the story about Action News. But speaking of news, there's a new – version of ios on the horizon there is and somebody i know has been testing the beta versions of it uh yes they have and i think he's going to come on the line and tell us a little bit about ios 12 beta oh oh uh is is this someone that you had planned someone that you had lined up like uh do you have have any information on this guest um yeah so uh, this guy is uh, uh, a bald guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. um, something we have in common. All right. Yeah. Uh, it turns out he's in the military. He's a he's a master sergeant in oh. the Air Force. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, he lives in Alaska. Oh. And he's, I mean, he, he's a really good friend of mine, but he's kind of a dick. Mm. You know, like, you know people like that? Like, where, like, they're really cool, but, like, kind of, like, just, it, dick heavy. It's really, really. I mean, I don't know about how heavy of a dick he has, but um, <laughs> it 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 kind of sounds like you're trying to describe me. Which I mean, all of those things are accurate. So I'm just gonna go do with you, that. Do you have news about iOS 12? Um. Okay. So here's the thing. I had iOS 12 beta five on my phone. Mm. Um. All my podcast apps stopped uh, stopped downloading and wouldn't play. So that was really annoying. I couldn't get iTunes to play. Like, I, I don't even know what was wrong with it. But I've been dealing with it for quite a while now, and finally I buckled down and said, screw it, I'm fixing it. So I fixed it. I went from iOS beta five, iOS 12 beta 5 to iOS 12 beta 9. Um, it 
runs amazing now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm I'm on an iPhone uh, iPhone 10, and it's it's working great. Here's the thing that really got me though. Now that everything's working again, my phone could update apps. I had 61 apps that were waiting for update. So on on beta five, you were not able to update your apps. My Is that phone right? would not talk to Apple or iTunes properly. Got it. So I couldn't do anything that might require any sort of validation in any way. I couldn't FaceTime for more than 30 seconds. Oh, geez. So beta five was trash. Uh, it was for me. Apparently, I'm I'm like the sole person that it happened to because I haven't seen anything anywhere about anybody else having any of these problems. Yeah. Um, which I mean that 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 fits the 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 mo. Uh, however, yeah, so, so nine is is pretty solid though. Yeah, nine nine is pretty solid. I haven't had any problems with it. I, of course, being stuck on five as I was, I haven't seen the updates like what got changed between five and nine. Um, I just went for the latest one when I when I updated when I finally got it to work and it, it took a little jiggering, took a little, uh, uh, backhandedness to, to get yeah. it to work. Um, but it's either that or, or wipe my phone and start from scratch. And I wasn't trying to do that because that's so, a pain. So is, is beta nine, the release candidate, or are we looking mm. at like one or two more versions? Um, if I had to guess, we would be getting an, uh, iPhone announcement here in the next, probably next week, late next week for an iPhone announcement the second week of September, second full week of September. Mm -hmm. So in that case, when are we looking at? What, what is the, what's the, so the time frame? What you're saying is we're going to get a, a teaser trailer for the teaser trailer. Yeah. For the trailer for the movie. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing uh, September 11th will be the iPhone announcement. So oh. we would get a uh, gold master that day. We'd probably get the last beta uh, early next week, maybe mid next week, and that'd be the last beta that comes out before they prepare to go gold. So that's, that's where I'm at with it. So uh, capability wise, what's your favorite thing uh, about iOS 12? Ooh, here's here's one of the problems with having been using it since ju like June or whatever. I've assimilated to to iOS 12. Like you so, don't remember what iOS 11 is like. Right. Uh, I I do know one of the big changes was the like the battery tracking. It, it tracks when you're charged. Like all the information that you used to have to go to a, an Apple store for them to look at, at for you to see how often it's charging, what apps are eating your battery, all that kind of stuff. You can now do that directly on your device. iPhone, um, Apple, uh, I mean, uh, iPad, whatever else. I'm pretty sure I can do that on iOS 11. Yeah. Yeah, you probably can. Um, it's just not accurate. It's more detailed in iOS 12. Okay. And right about the same time that that went live on iOS 11 is when I got iOS 12. So um, overall, though, really, I mean, to, to, to keep it down to a minimum for the people that don't like Apple, Sean, um, it's, it's just really smooth. It's 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 another iteration. Like they haven't reinvented it since iOS eight or seven or whatever it was. Um, another another iteration makes it nice again. And the couple of things that are changed are not something that most people will even like have a problem with. It just seems like oh that should have that should have been there already. Hmm. So you know what, dude? You know what I need? What's that? I need about sixty million dollars. Mm, what would you do with sixty million? I would throw it at Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy a lot of movie tickets. <laughs> is that so? Um, is it only sixty million that we need? Let's find out. <laughs> Welcome to BT Movie Draft Minute, presented by Diamond Club TV for the week of August twentieth, two thousand eighteen. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Deep down, I dream of a better tomorrow, where chickens can cross the road and not be questioned about their motives. Let's go to the scoreboard! Team Walking Drunk is in last place with $392.2 million. Team Game Night is in fifth place with $544.2 million. Team Ritual Mystery is in fourth place with $720.5 million. Team DeVos Squad falls to third place with $774.2 million. Team Have a Drink is in second place thanks to a $44 million weekend from Crazy Richie. 
Asians, bringing their total to $773.9 million and continuing to dominate in first place, it's Team Movie Party with $1 billion, $33.4 million. That's your Movie Draft Minute. All totals are accurate as of August 22nd, 2018. There's only a couple weeks left of this draft, and um, I want third place, man. Everybody go see Mission Impossible, <laughs> even though Movie Pass won't let you do it. Um, uh, how's that Movie Pass thing working for you lately? Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I said a couple weeks ago I can't be mad at them because I've already gotten my money's worth out of it, and yeah. I've still got like nine months left of use of the thing. But man, is it frustrating! Like broken yeah. promises, up and down. Uh, yeah. Um, Most frustrating thing to me is not that, that they limit the number of movies that you can see in a month. Is that it's you can't that they go limit see which titles you can see. Oh, I was gonna say is that you can't see Mission Impossible sixty million times between now and a week from now. Um, yeah, I can't, see, or at least as of yet, I have not been able to see it with Movie Pass. Period. At all. <laughs> period. At all. And, and so um, uh, that that might be why we, we that's that's why we uh, we're, we're in fourth place because nobody can see the movie we need them to see. With yeah, the movie like pass. it's already made almost two hundred million dollars. But I yeah. man, if if uh, Movie Pass was still like really doing its Movie Pass thing, mm. we, we'd probably be at like three four hundred million dollars right, right now. It's like it's at least a half a billion dollar movie. <sighs> yeah, like <laughs> it can make that in week four, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Even oh five, even even week five, it can it can do it there too. Um, yeah. So again, uh, we'll we'll see how it fleshes out, but I I think things are pretty much locked in at this point. There's there's not going to be much movement with anybody now that we're at the point we are. Yeah. So since we can't get sixty million dollars. It'd be really cool if we could reach sixty dollars mm. on patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah, that's uh the, so so our patrons one of those things where we really appreciate the people that, that put forth the money and the uh can can cough up a dollar. If it's not gonna hurt, man, if it's not gonna uh, break your bank for you to to throw four bucks at a show each month, um go ahead and cruise on over to patreon.com slash ritual misery and just Put put the numbers in there, and man, we will appreciate it far more than the 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 credit card company will. We'll appreciate it more than you will miss it. We, that, that's that's already true. That's, yep. that's guaranteed. Uh, we already no, appreciate I, it uh, more than more than you'll miss it, and you haven't even spent it yet. So cruise on over to yep. patreoncom slash misery and show us that you give a fuck by showing us that you give a buck, and we'll all move on with my bad rhyme schemes. Uh, we love our patrons. Uh, Patreon.com slash Rachel Misery. Uh, dude, uh, go ahead and go ahead and slap that other button. We got. Uh, I'm right just gonna. There on the... I'm just gonna touch it. Just want to touch it. Smash it. I just just need to touch it. Just like shove shove your finger into it. How about, how about I delicately place my finger right here? Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. Hi, dude. Uh, this week I can see the name of the game. It's called Action News or Fake News. Um, I. Whoo, politics right now is so fun. Um, uh, 2019-09-01 is going to be a fun day. All right. So with all that said, dude, uh, let's crank out this game, man. What are the rules? <laughs> the rules are that you're going to say fake or real. I'm going to oh. name, I'm going to read to you 10 headlines or 10 story synopses, and you're going to tell me if they're real or they're or if they're fake. Okay. Let's do it. It's that simple. All right, man. Let's roll right into it. The first one. Police, hold on, if I can make this uh, not pop up again. Police executing a search warrant at a home of Bloomington, Illinois, Mortician discovered 218 embalmed human penises. Hmm. Is that a real news story or a fake one? We're going to go real. That sounds about right. That sounds like some shit that would happen in Indiana, especially Bloomington. Um, well, Bloomington, Illinois was the uh, headline, but it doesn't matter Whatever. because it didn't actually did not actually happen. It's that because, is is because you, you put the wrong state down. You got to go to Bloomington, Indiana. 
<gasps> well, okay, so yeah, that I think that story actually happened, but it did in fact happen um, on the campus of Indiana University in Bloomington, Illinois, or Bloomington, Indiana. So even you screwed uh, up. The, it'd be great yeah. if the Indianapolis <laughs> University campus was in Bloomington, Illinois. <laughs> oh my god, that would be fantastic. Uh, no, that is a that is a one hundred percent made up uh, fake news story. Uh, mm-hmm. Number two, mm-hmm. teen solves six Rubik's cubes underwater in only one breath. I can't solve the Rubik's cube once ever without peeling the stickers off and and cheating. Let alone six David, times in one breath. David can solve one in about a minute 15. You've got a genius child. <sighs> but the question here is... Six did, in one breath. And the average yes. person, I mean, even if you train pretty good, you can't hold your breath more than five minutes. To be able to solve oh, six like in under five max. minutes, um, you're looking at... I mean, even if you only go three, six and five, six and three minutes, you're looking at thirty seconds each. The world record is at ah oh shit, was it eleven and a half seconds, something like that? I'm gonna go with true. Why not true? It is, in fact, a real news story. There we go. Right, number three. In August 2018, Vice President Mike Pence proposed using a planned U.S. Space Force to defend against attacks from outer space gaze. Oh, spell gaze. G-A-Y-S. Fake. (laughs) That is. It it might be a real headline, but it's totally fake news. (laughs) Right, and that's the thing. Yeah, (laughs) these were all headlines plucked from somewhere. So they're all real headlines, but is the story real or is the story fake? Gotcha. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mike Pence did not say that we're going to uh, be on the lookout for gay aliens. Um, all right, number four. Woman gets contact lens stuck in eye for 28 years. True. Is, in fact, a real story. Yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, that's, I think that is the only story on this entire list that I've actually Heard of. like read the article for it prior to to me making this game yeah all right number five man being pursued by baby squirrel calls police for help i just like the radio silence i'm gonna go (laughs) that's big for great radio i'm gonna go with false uh, you would be incorrect because this was in fact a real story in fact i should never have faith in humanity (laughs) <laughs> in fact, I am going to I'm going to shoot you the link to this so that you can display it uh, in in the chat here because there is and I apologize to the audio only um, audience members here. There is a picture of the cutest, sweetest baby squirrel. Oh goddamn! Uh, it turns out that this baby squirrel was actually in need itself because it was uh without its mama and um baby squirrels live for about oh i don't know five minutes without their mama uh so the man was calling for help when it turns out that the squirrels one that actually needed help so it's a very sweet story uh anyway number six okay a man named sean killums was arrested in Florida for tranquilizing and raping alligators. Fake. It is indeed a fake story. I, when I saw this headline, I was like, well, normally I would say right off the bat that this would be fake, but he said it was in Florida. And there's a lot of crazy ass news stories that's that come a, out that, of Florida. Yeah, that, that was exactly the thought going through my head. I was like, "Oh shit, uh, it's Florida <laughs> though." Like, uh, you, yeah, you, you know, stop not... me though. You know, stop me is I don't know how to how you would rape a, a an alligator or a crocodile. Like, I don't. <laughs> I, I I'm not sure how that. I I don't know how that works. I don't know the anatomy of my reptiles as, as well as I should. Maybe. We should ask somebody from Florida. All right, number seven. 
Nude man exercising at a Planet Fitness, quote, thought it was a judgment-free zone. I'm going to go true. That sounds like some shit that would happen in Florida, too. <laughs> that might be too uh, easy for Florida. That might be like some uh, Nebraska stuff, man. Uh, that is, this is indeed a true story. However, what didn't take place in Florida, this one was in New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire and Nebraska is kind of the same thing. <laughs> Which, okay, we were talking about Florida, but okay. Uh, anyway, number eight. <laughs> <laughs> number eight. The animated children's program, Veggie Tales. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with Veggie Tales? Unfortunately. Yeah, okay. So the animated children's program, Veggie Tales, introduced a cannabis character in August of 2018. Fake news. That is indeed fake news. It's got to be like a uh, pine leaf or something like that. Like some. Yeah, so... Th- yeah, because I mean, Veggie Tales is very, uh, it's very Christian based, very, um, very uh, right minded, you know, right. Uh, I don't know. A can of, that would never, ever. It's it's a conservative media platform. Yes, there would never the be children. a cannabis plant. Like no way in a, yeah. in this children. No, not so. I'd be surprised to see it even in the like the farthest left leaning uh, media most liberal media that you can imagine. I, I, I can't picture cannabis being in a, in a children's program. I don't know, uh, man. New, New Mexico right now going to be going up, up for, uh, to see how, just how loud the cush really is. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Gary Johnson is, is running for, uh, New Mexico for the Senate. Senate. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Uh, hmm. <laughs> this slogan makes me laugh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's he's uh what is it he's he is fiscally, a uh, fiscal uh, fiscal he's cons- fiscally conservative and, and socially and cool socially cool <laughs> Jesus <laughs> God damn it Gary Johnson All right number nine You know you got to vote for him right Like you you're almost obliged to <laughs> <laughs> I have an obligation If if you if you can, it's uh, it's almost like if I don't care what the platform is if you come out with the coolest slogan. Like if you can just come out and just be obnoxious with your with your official slogan, you kind of got to vote for the person. Yeah, I mean it's that's where I'm at yeah, with it. That's how that's how government works. Uh, I mean it's, it hasn't really worked out the other way too see, much right now. So yeah, see, I, if you can separate the politics from the government, because like people forget that the best politician isn't necessarily the, the best, best governor. Governor, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. No. Number nine. All right. A man sued McDonald's because he was still depressed after eating a happy meal. Oh, it's fake news. That is indeed fake news. See, out of all the stories that I put on here, this is the one that I would have gotten wrong for sure. In like in like a hundred alternate universes, I would have gotten this wrong every time, probably. Jeez. Like that just sounds like something that would happen. Litigious society we live. Exactly. Only in America. Mm. All right. And your final headline, Mm -hmm. number 10. Police find 82 grams of drugs in Wisconsin woman's vagina. Eighty-two grams of drugs in a Wisconsin woman's vagina. See, a kilogram is 2.2 pounds. That's 1,000 grams. And you're looking at less than a tenth of 2 point. So you're looking at at a fifth of a pound. (laughs) So you're looking at uh, how many ounces is that? That's a fifth. Uh, That's too much damn math. It's like three ounces. It's like three ounces of drugs. Uh, Three ounces is like. It's pretty small. I'm going to say true. This is indeed a real story. I just shot you the link for it. The breakdown is as follows. 36.67 grams of cocaine, 14.72 grams of meth, 27.8 grams of synthetic weed, six ecstasy pills, 1.26 grams of marijuana. All 
smuggled inside of her vagina. Yo, that cush is too loud right there. Holy shit. <gasps> oh my God. Like that's, that's a lot of drugs and that's a lot of drugs to put into a, um, into a, um, into your pouch. Wow. So she would slip the drugs into her vagina if police stopped them. The police dog showed a particular interest in the driver's seat where she had been <laughs> sitting. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know about you know most police dogs, but but most of the dogs that I've ever been around have been uh, crotch hounds. Right, like they they're, want they're... to sniff the crotch. So it, it says uh, uh, after a corrections officer performed a strip search on Webster, she suggested there was something hidden in her vagina. Then they did a CT scan of her pelvic area, and it showed something that looked like a plastic bag that was about the size of a human fist. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real news story, folks. Oh, my um, God. M Beam in the chat says, the cooch too big. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh boy! All right, oh. Amos, you have beaten the game. What you, How did you I... won six to four. Oh my gosh, that's insane! I uh, 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 that's that's really kind of ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I was inspired to make this game because I did receive action news in the mail today. Mm -hmm. So um, I figured I would make a game about uh, fake news or real news. Nice. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, hey man, we got a we got a video from the Have a Drink folks. It's been a while, but we really appreciate their inputs. And this week is a little bit different. It's something uh, it's not a it's not a beer or or a tea or anything else. It's uh well, I'll let I'll let them tell you about it. Okay. As soon as it finishes fucking buffering, because God forbid shit <sighs> just stay loaded. Oh, thanks YouTube. Oh my God, it's not it's not <laughs> even YouTube. It's Google Drive. It, like. Well, Google. How shitty it's, is that? It's all Google. <laughs> and there's no way to exit out. Like, it's... Uh, so, while we're waiting for the video to load, uh, I will I will preempt the next segment. Um, I have got the long-awaited third part of my completely unscientific Facebook experiment. Uh, when we had Richard Gunther on, I said that within five episodes, I will have part three of my experiment and this is five episodes after that so i just barely made the deadline for Jeez, for doing part dude. all right well this is uh this is not working so let's go ahead and cut to that okay um hopefully we can uh we can get that buffered in the meantime yeah so my completely unscientific facebook experiment is based on the idea that um, Facebook was not fun for me anymore, and I wanted a way to quantify my experience. So I went through and um, basically uh, so, counted so let's start positive from the, experience versus negative experience. Yeah, let's start from the beginning. You, you Originally, your categories were fa friends and family life updates, encouraging messages, and entertaining were the positives. Mm -hmm. And then advertisements, hateful messages, and anything having to do with politics, whether I agree with it or not, were considered negative. And you ended up with a 24 positive to 26 negative back on 28 March. Uh, yeah, so it was a pretty um, pretty solidly negative experience. I was, I was encountering more, e even though it was slightly more, but still more negative posts than positive posts. Now, on the 11th of June, you came back with um, 34 positive, 16 negative by the same by the same metric. So very like almost a two thirds, I guess right at two thirds were positive versus almost a right. 50 50 split the first time. Now, what did you change between those two? OK, so between the, the first one. So the, the first one uh, I did when I, I was only going to Facebook ever when I had some sort of a notification, like someone tagged me in a post mm -hmm. or, um, it, occasionally it would, it would notify me of a, of someone's birthday or something like that. Probably if I had, uh, at one time made them like a close friend or something like that, I would get a notification about their birthday. Um, other than, than that, I really didn't go to Facebook, uh, like on purpose. I didn't just open it up and just start scrolling typically. Um, 
now the second time that I did the experiment was, I believe because of an algorithm change within Facebook, because that's when they were, you know, they were getting a lot of backlash about, um, you know, how shitty Facebook was. So they started to change, uh, the way, uh, the way that they, uh, I guess programmed their algorithm. Right. So, Oh, no, no keep going. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so I went back through and I determined that, um, they did like, they had to do something different. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, they changed something, whether they were filtering out most of the politics or, uh, something because I had a, a way better experience. But you well, didn't change your behavior at all other than going there more often. Correct. Between, between one and two, I did not change my behavior. Nothing changed for, from my perspective, my end. Okay. Uh, but Facebook improved for me uh, based on that experiment. Now, since then, when my birthday happened last month, uh, you know how you get like, you know, 80 people like post on your wall, happy birthday, because they all get the notification, right? That, hey, it's right. Amos's birthday. Hey, it's Ken's birthday. They completely forgot it's your birthday until Facebook reminds them and then they give a shit enough to well, no, that's just me. That's how I do birthdays. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, no, I think you speak for the vast majority of us because that's that's what most. That's of us the do. real value of Facebook, folks. Uh, birthday reminders and not yes. having to buy people cards. You just put some fancy shit on there. And I always put the same thing. It's always HB comma than their initials. Ah, see, you're even better than me. I I type happy birthday exclamation point. Mm. <laughs> um. Yeah. Um. So I, I apologize to everyone that received a birthday message from me this year because uh, I just added myself as uh, not remembering your birthday nor taking the time to put anything special. I, I just I now, feel they're so inconsequential. However, what I did this year for all of my birthday messages, I went through each notification and I responded to each person with a personal message. Bare minimum of one full sentence, but for the most part, I like two, three, four sentences, a personal reply to the person like, Hey man, how's the family? I know you're, you know, you guys just had a baby last year. How's, how's the baby, you know, whatever, a, a personalized message to each person. Mm -hmm. Now, not a, um, not a private message, not a DM or whatever it is. Facebook calls just it a reply to their public, to post. the post. Yeah. Right. So a public post, a public response to their public post. And, I noticed the next time I went to Facebook after I did that, I had just generally speaking a pleasant Facebook experience, excuse me, experience. So it was time for experiment part three. So I went back through and the results bear that out. You're looking at 40 had, positive to 10 negative. Right. And the vast majority of my negative posts were because they were advertisements. And one of the things that I put as advertisement is where Facebook says, is you know, basically like a page suggestion. Like, hey, these seven of your friends like this page. You should too. I count mm -hmm. that as a as an ad. Other than ads, you only had one post that was negative. And that was yeah. political. Yep. And, was and it wasn't mine. even <laughs> and it would no. <laughs> Definitely wasn't yours. Um, but yeah, and even this post wasn't particularly nasty. It was uh, perhaps baiting, but mm. it wasn't like really nasty. Um, good job, Facebook. Like I might actually spend some time on your site now. That's awesome. Like, this, is, is, this is pretty good. If I, so I, I do uh, 50, I, I scroll through uh, my feed, 50 posts, and that's how I do my count. And, um, if I took out the ads, I would have a 48 or 49 positive out of 50. And, um, that's, that's incredible. Good. Yeah. That's, that's very good. Yeah. <clears throat> and, so, and you're not faulting Facebook for advertising on their page. No, um, no, it, not, it's, not. it's a matter of what does it add or take away from your experience, even though your experience is reliant upon that advertising it still does it have a good or, or negative effect on your on your experience itself. Right. So and and like I said, the ads were not even like they weren't like offensive or like you know, way off base. It was like, hey, all your friends like this Doctor Who page. That's awesome. Maybe you like it too, you know. So, so you, um, you mean you mean like 
like other things in life, you are responsible for your own Facebook. <laughs> it seems that that would be the case. Weird. So Speaking weird. of case, let's see what Casey Price and Bob have to say to us this week. Let's see if this works this time. <laughs> um, let me unmute the channel before I hit the play button, and we'll see what goes on now. Hey, Kent Namus. This is Justin. And Casey. And we're here to talk a little bit about tequila. Uh, we just did a couple back-to-back -back marathon episodes of it, uh, and we had one that we wanted to mention to you uh, called Espelon. Yeah, this is the Reposado variety, and we talk a little bit about what Reposado means. It's a tequila that's been aged from three months to one year. It's kind of rested in a barrel. It's to basically kiss the barrel. Yeah, it kind of smooths it out as well. And that's what we've kind of found with this variety specifically. Tequila is just very smooth. It's like water. Yeah, a we little would, dangerous. Yeah, we would do a whole little tasting bit for it, but um, it's all uh, all gone. Yeah, we've uh, we've drank all this one. But if you want to hear what we thought when we did drink it, you can check us out at haveadrinkshow.com and even check us out on uh, on all the podcast feeds that you can get out there. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks. Wow. Tequila. Oh, man. I, do, are do, you a do, tequila do, fan? Do, do. Oh, my God. I love tequila. Uh, see, I, 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 I think I, I've had too many bad experiences, like too many college tequila experiences. Oh, and no, I've, no. I've I, never gone to college. <laughs> I can't drink it. I can't drink it, but I love it. Oh, oh man. Oh, my it's, gosh. Like, like one of my, one of my favorite events that, uh, it's, it came at a bad time, but it w worked out pretty well for me. Uh, for the most part, anyway, uh, me and Jack were hanging out one night, just, Drinking and talking of our woes and our troubles with women in particular. And we didn't have ice, but we had tequila mix and or a, a margarita mix and tequila. So uh, we looked at the bottles and they were about the same size. So we were drinking 50-50 margarita mix tequila drinks uh, warm off the kitchen counter in Hawaii. Oh, while, oh my God. While sitting in a hot tub uh, under the, the, the lovely sky of Hawaii. Uh, drinking to our woes, and we 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 drank all the whatever we had. Um, yeah, that's the night I woke up in the middle of the living room floor, but naked. Oh my god! I know how I got naked. I don't know how I got to the living room. <laughs> uh, there's a fine line with tequila. So tequila, in my experience with tequila, like you become, well, not you. You like in the the um, empirical sense, you become a really fun person to be around until you're definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I really like tequila though. I like the taste of it. I like um, I like the burn. I, I, tequila is one of my favorites. I just I, I I've found that expensive tequila, so like top shelf tequila yeah. is pretty good, but mm -hmm. most like the vast majority of my experience with tequila has been bottom shelf tequila, oh, yeah, like no. Jose Cuervo and, uh, no, not I, out of uh, Jose is more of a mid shelf. Um, uh, okay. Because well, there, yeah, there is I mean, some I refining to it. Commissary brands that are like, you know, $6 for a handle pa of it. Patriot's choice. <laughs> yes. Patriot's choice. <laughs> Oh, class six tequila. Uh, if it comes in a plastic bottle, don't like <laughs> <laughs> you got to drink tequila from a glass bottle. Yes. And if it's got a cork, even better. Like that's, that's how you start differentiating shit. Yeah. And then if it's got a worm, probably even better. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could go that route. <laughs> it might be a little too much. Hey man, um, uh, um, if, uh, if, if people want to find out more about your adventures with tequila, where can they go? Well, not to my Twitter because I do not talk about tequila there. But if they want to find out about anything else, they can go to my Twitter, rm underscore del noche. Oh yeah, or if you really want to see how much I love tequila, next time I go to South by at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. Um, I might I might have some tequila this weekend just to just because I got a couple bottles. I just haven't had any in a while, so maybe some tequila and lime and salt. Maybe some shots going around the room. That could be fun. 
Um, <laughs> uh, as for the show, though, if you if you if you really want to hear more of this horseshit show, uh, cruise on over to uh, 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 Twitter. Yeah, there you go. That's man, that just didn't want to come out. Cruise on over to Twitter at Ritual Misery, R I T U A L M I S E R Y. And that's uh, that's that's the best place you can find this show and all the updates. You can see pictures of him drinking as well. Yeah, um, that's not unlikely actually, on either one of our twitters. Unfortunately, but we should probably <laughs> fix those before we get real jobs. Um, submit ideas on our subreddit, uh, ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.com slash ritual misery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. We really appreciate all that you're doing for the podcast world. I mean, we're going to thank you enough times for everybody else that doesn't. Uh, thank you for listening for Kent, for me, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery podcast. Also, happy birthday, Ritual Misery. You're four years old. What? See if it'll work today. Where's my little thing at? <laughs> Your little thing. Don't, <laughs> don't answer that. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. You didn't think I was going to forget that, did you? I was waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you, Flavor Toothpaste, for that again.